Y'all sounded good, amen. Come on up, Sister J. Amen. Well, Sister J, come on up here. If, if you don't have a Bible, go ahead. We got Bibles in the back. Go ahead, grab a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, go in the back. Go ahead and grab a Bible. Happens for a reason. 
But here's what you need from God. You need from God understanding. Because the hardest thing is for you try to make sense out of something that don't make sense. The hardest thing is for you try to legitimize what is illegitimate. You have to understand that everything happened for a reason. And if you don't know why it happened, you need to get close enough to God so he can tell you why did this thing happen. How many of you ever went through something and you didn't know why it happened? Amen. Some of y'all went through premature death so you didn't know why it happened. Some of y'all was in jail and your grandbaby, get up, get the thing. Some of y'all was in jail and you didn't know why it happened. The thing is, God says everything happens for a reason. You have to understand why do things happen. And if you don't understand why things happen, all you have to do is give it to God. All you have to do is give it to God. Next, turn me to the book of James. James 5 and 16. 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 It says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. One of the greatest things that you can do is learn how to apologize. Learn how to apologize. It says confess your faults to one another. See, the thing is, we're all imperfect. We all make mistakes. And it's interesting. Yesterday, uh, my son-in-law and daughter-in-law went out on a date. And long story short, they came back from the date. They were both mad at each other. And here's the thing. Things happen. That's called life. But you have to learn how to apologize. And the other part of that is you have to learn how to forgive. Because if you apologize, some people won't forgive you. Matter of fact, they won't accept the apology. I'm still mad at you. I'm not going to let this thing go. And they hold on in pride and anger. But if you apologize, you release that thing. And God won't hold that sin guilty against you anymore. Because we all make mistakes. No man or woman can stand before God and say, I'm perfect. We all mess up. We, we all hurt people's feelings. We all do wrong. But when you do wrong, don't stand on the wrong that you've done and say, I, I, uh, well, she did this to me or he did this to me. You have to apologize. It was interesting. On the way to church today, my grandbaby, I had to fuss at him. He, and he made me say a bad word. I was mad because I told him to get dressed and he was over there. See, doing what he's doing now, staring at his cell phone. Well, the point was, I said, get dressed. I said, I got to move, man. I got to move. I come home and he's sitting up in his drawer showing and he ain't got no pants on. I'm like, what are you doing? And I got mad. And when you get mad, sometimes you say things that hurt. But see, you can't let that thing sit there. <clears throat> After I calmed down, I realized that I had offended him. So when we got in the car, I said, man, you made me mad. But I'm sorry. You have to learn how to apologize. I'm not perfect. I can't stand up and say I'm flawless. I, I'm perfect before God. I've never sinned. That would be a lie to get to hell. I'm a sinner just like you. The only difference is I put God first. And if you put God first, he'll bless the rest. Learn how to apologize. Because one day you're going to need somebody to apologize for you. Amen. Next, turn me to Hebrews 12 and 14. Hebrews 12 and 14. Hebrews. 12 and 14. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 14. Hebrews 12 and 14. This is interesting. How many of y'all got crazy generation curses in your family? Yeah, we, it, all y'all should raise your hand. You look look in the mirror. Think about your family members. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, how many of y'all got jail generation curses in your family? We got a little bit of that. Uh, mo baby mama, baby daddy. Uh, yeah. With that. Uh, let's see. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, sexual dysfunction. We always put your hand down. Yeah. Got that weird uncle that always come by at the family reunion, always staring at little. How you doing? You're like, what? Hold on, hold on. Don't, you can't go in the back with Uncle Joe. You can't go nowhere with him. You, everybody got one of them uncles or a big cousin that you don't want to spend no time by yourself with. Amen. Those are called generation curses. All right, here's one of the first things to, to, to break a generation curse. 
Hebrews 12 and 14. Hebrews 12 and 14. It says this. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. What does that mean? What does that mean? Don't do anything to anybody that you don't want to be done unto you. Don't do anything to anybody that you don't want to be done unto you. See, the crazy thing about life, I'm old, I'm 52 years old. Every good thing that you do will come back to you. But here's the other side of that. Every bad thing you do will also come back to you. So the thing is, the Bible says, learn how to follow peace. Learn how to follow peace. Don't be so quick to check somebody. Don't be so quick to get in somebody's DMs. And go. Don't be so quick to pull up and pop up. Because the Bible says if you follow trouble, you won't be in trouble. If you follow peace, you will have peace. And here's the thing. Ain't nobody in here a punk. But nobody in here want that smoke. Huh? I don't care about that smoke. Bring that smoke. Bring it on. Uh, it's interesting. I've been to jail seven times. Seven times I've been to jail. The last time I went to jail, I was in there for three weeks. And here's the thing. We was in the jail. We was in the county. We was in there. It wasn't the soul up in there like, I love jail. I love jail. Yeah, you talk that foolishness on the outside, but when you get locked up, won't let you. When you got, when a sticker bar, when a sticker bar is pleasure, when you can't watch TV, when you ain't got no cell phone, when you can't even get up out the bed when you want to. See, the thing about jail is this, I was talking to my nephew about the other day. When you go to jail, you got to use the bathroom. It's just a big old room. And the toilet is in the middle. And you got to sit there and handle your business right there. Everybody watching. You do what you do. See, when you go to jail, you have no privacy. You have no rights. So people say, I don't want that smoke. But the truth is, they don't really want that fire either. Because nobody looks for trouble. So the Bible says, instead of trying to be big, bad, and bold, follow a path that leads to peace. Follow peace. Follow peace. Follow peace. Next, turn me to Psalms 23 and 6. 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 It says, surely... Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does that mean? If you follow peace, goodness and mercy will follow you. If you follow good things, then good things will be behind you. If you follow things that are powerful, then powerful things will follow you. But if you follow trouble, then trouble will follow you. If you follow negativity, then negativity will follow you. At some point in your life, you got to choose to do better. At some point in your life, you have to choose to do better. Uh, one of my mamas used to say this. She said, baby, if they do better, they would do better. Some of y'all know better, you still doing the wrong thing. God says, if you want peace, follow peace. If you want money, follow money. If you want blessings, follow blessings. But if you want trouble, follow trouble. And you'll get just what you ask for. And that's one of the craziest things about the Bible. Sometimes God gives you. Just what you asked for. Has anybody ever been in that line? You asked God for something, and God said, okay, you ain't ready for it, but here, he gave you that man that you wasn't ready for, baby. He gave you that, that house that you wasn't ready for, eviction. He gave you that car you wasn't ready for, repossession. He gave you that job you wasn't prepared for, fire. See, the thing is, sometimes God said, oh, you think you bad? You think you can handle this? You ain't got no patience? I'll give it to you right now. And he give it to you right now. And you ain't ready for that thing. The Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Some of you got to understand, you got to be patient 
and wait for God to prepare you for what you ask him for. Don't just ask for some big blessing and you ain't ready for a big blessing. A Mercedes costs $1,200 for a tuna. You got that kind of money? You got $7 a gallon for gas? You better think about what you're asking God for. Because some of the things you ask him for, you're not prepared for. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Learn how to follow peace. Next, turn with me. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 7 and 5 and 7. Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Deuteronomy 5 and 7. When you guys say amen. Deuteronomy 5 and 7. Deuteronomy 5 and 7 says this. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Mm. Thou shalt not make any graven images or likenesses or anything that is in heaven or above, that is on the earth or beneath, or that is the waters that are beneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of all those that hate me. Put a pen in that. Go down to verse 12. It says, keep the Sabbath day and sanctify it as the Lord thy God had commanded thee. All right, here's what happens. God says, don't put nothing before him. Don't put nothing before him. Don't put a job before him. Don't put a career before him. Don't put your children before him. Don't put your uh, college degree before him. Don't put the house that you love before him. Don't put your Harley Davidson motorcycle before him. Don't put Sunday fun day before him. Don't even put your birthday before him. See, the thing what we do is we only call on God when we in trouble. We only call on God when we in trouble. And what you have to realize is if you call on God all the time, you only have to call on him when you're in trouble. But we only want to call on God when we're in trouble. And the thing is, God says, Sometimes you're going to call me and I'm going to send your name to voicemail. You don't want God to send you the voicemail because he's going to say, Hey, uh, you calling me now, but last night you was at the party. You calling me now and uh, last Sunday you was at the beach with your partner smoking weed, drinking it up. He said, how come you didn't call on me then? Why are you calling me now when the devil's right behind you? You got to learn how to keep God before you and put God first. And it's not easy because you live in a world where being a, being a Christian means you're a buster. You live in a world where going to church means you're scared. What you going to church for? What, you trying to be good? You think you better than me? You think you all that? Oh, you saved? So you better than us now? Oh, you don't drink no more? Oh, you don't have sex as often as you used to? You don't cuss everybody out? What you trying to do? Who you trying to impress? It's crazy that I'm a, I'm a teacher. And they tell students who study that's bad. I'm like, what? Hold on. You study. That's bad. But to fail all your classes, you are like, you cool, man. Yeah. But the other part of that is, once you grow up, it's the reverse. Because once you grow up, if you don't have the right grades, you don't get in the right doors, and you don't have the right things. So learn how to follow things that are good. Next, turn with me to Matthew 11 and 28. And Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28. Matthew 11 and 28 says this. Come unto me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many of you in here are tired? All right. Some of you are tired of being poor. Some of you are tired of being lonely. Some of you are tired of being broke. Some of you are tired of being sad. Some of you are tired of being angry. Some of you are tired of being depressed. Some of you are tired of being whatever you're tired of. God says, if you're tired of something, he says, come and give it to me. And he says, we can exchange bags. 
He says, you carry around sadness and depression and generation curses and I'm raising kids by myself. Uh, ain't nobody here to help me. God says, if you come with me and if you follow me, I'm going to take those children and I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to take that low FICO score and I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to take that empty house and I'm going to give you a husband or a wife. I'm going to take that bank account that's empty and I'm going to fill it up. But you got to learn how to follow God. He said, if you follow me, he will make the changes in your life. You got to stop following your friends. Too many of y'all following your partners, and they ain't got no answers. How you going to somebody who ain't got no man to ask about a man that you already have? How you going to a homeboy that ain't got no credit to ask about a credit score that you already have? The thing is, you got to learn how to follow God. Because if you follow him, he will give you the answers to the desires and the things that you want. Stop following your friends because your friends don't have it right. Believe me, your friend ain't nowhere where he or she's supposed to be. Your friend trying to make it just like everybody else. But if you follow God, God says, I will make your burdens light. I will make your life easier. Uh, he says your depression will turn into joy. He says your loneliness will turn into a marriage. He says everything that you're asking for, he already gave you the answer. But you got to learn how to put him first and learn how to follow him. Next, turn with me, turn with me to Matthew 4 and 19. Matthew 4 and 19. Matthew 4 and 19. Matthew 4 and 19. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And Jesus said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What does that mean? God saw two men fishing. That means they were at their job. They were doing what he called them to do. And he said, hey guys, he said, follow me. And they were like, what are we following you for? He said, you fishing for fish, but I will make you fishers of men. What does that mean to you and I? Uh, I go on Instagram, I had to ask my son this morning. I said, why would a girl who has a husband post a picture of herself in a bikini? And then I said, why would a young girl post herself half naked so that everybody can see? And then we started to talk about this thing. See, what many of us want is we want likes. We want people to like us. We want people to approve of us. We want people to think our life is good. We want people to think that we popping and we got it going on. But God says this, if you follow me, I will make people like you. Because people are going to say, wow, you got it together. Wow, you, 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 everything is glowing around you. Wow, everything is growing around you. He says, I will make you fishers of men. You want God to make you a fisher of men. See, if you're a fisher of a man, you ain't got to take off all your clothes to get no attention. If you're a fisher of a man, you ain't got to go on your social media and do stupid stuff to get attention. Because God will draw people to you without you doing nothing but being yourself. Be the person that God called you to be. And he will make you fishers of men. And he will increase your life. Next, turn me to John 12 and 26. John 12 and 26. John 12 and 26. John 12 and 26. It says, if any man serve me, let him follow me and be where I am. There shall also my servant be. If any man serve him, him will my father also honor. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall my servant be. If any man serve him, serve me, let my him will my father also honor. Let me translate that. Jesus says, follow me. And Jesus says, if you follow me, I will be with you. See, the thing is, when you go into that job interview, you want God there with you. Uh, when you go into the cemetery, you want God there with you. When you walk into that hospital room, you want God there with you. When you walk into that courtroom, you want God there with you. When you walk into that classroom, you want God there with you. Wherever you have to walk into, you want God to walk with you there. You don't want to walk into certain situations by yourself. Because if you walk into certain situations by yourself, the devil won't see you by yourself. And if the devil catch you slipping, you won't get God. I know so many brothers that got shot with a gun in their lap. 
I know two people that died that way. They were driving down the street, they had their gun right in their lap, they had the four four right in their lap, they had the desert in their lap, and they rolling down Crenshaw, and they rolling through the hood. Pow, got killed. I know a brother, I watched a man die on the, on the bus, on Vernon and Crenshaw. He had a gun, and the brother had a knife. He thought he would be protected, but he died that day. The thing is, if you don't have God with you, the devil gonna see you by yourself. And if the devil catch you slipping, the devil gonna steal, kill, or destroy. Because that's his job. So you want to be in a situation where God is always with you, where God is breathing on you, where God is speaking to you. Don't want to be in a situation where you by yourself. Next, go with me to John 12 and 25. John 12 and 25. John 12 and 25. John 12 and 25. The Bible says, He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hated his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. What does that mean? God says, if you love your life, more than you love him, you will lose your life. If you love your life more than you love him, you will lose your life. Some of you say, well, it's mine, it's my life, and I'm gonna do what I wanna do. But you don't realize, if you put yourself before God, God says you're gonna lose that life. I know so many young people that cancer came and stuffed out. I saw so many young people that got heart disease and got stuffed out. I saw you know, so many young people that was driving and they got stuffed out. I know a young girl that was, that was driving like two weeks ago and drove into a lake. The thing is, God said, if you put anything before me, you will lose your life. You got to learn how to put God first. And it's not easy to put God first. Because you live in a world that says, it's all about me. I'm putting me first. You live in a world that says, I'm my own God, that I need to serve me. It's about me, me, me. And God said, if you are the head of your life, you're headed for destruction. You're headed for trouble. You're going to have to bury some family members. You're going to have a lot of lonely nights. But when you put God first, he'll say, I'll bless the rest. And he says, not only will you have a good life now, you have a life eternal. You want God to give you an eternal life. That's life now and life here to come. You don't want to just be cracking now and then next week you're not here no more. Because the interesting thing, once the funeral is over, most people forget and they walk away. I talked to my nephew yesterday and he had to bury his mama yesterday. And I had to tell the church, I said, this young boy is in the world by himself at 18. He is by himself in an apartment on the east side of town by himself. I said, don't y'all forget about this young boy because after this service is over and y'all have to repass and y'all eat and turn it up, y'all gonna drive to your house. He's going home by himself. You can't forget that we need to embrace and speak to one another. See, the thing about the Church of Light is we is family. I love each and every one of you. I, I believe in each and every one of you. I pray for you every day. The thing is, we have to stay connected and pray for each other and be there for one another. Because sometimes life gets hard and life gets tough. And the very last thing, turn with me to Deuteronomy 30 and 15. 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 Sometimes life is about choices. Life is about choices. Life is about choices. The interesting thing about life, um, if you would have studied in school, you would have had a better, you got, got better grades, you could have went to college for free. And now you could have had an easy job doing nothing. Uh, it's funny, my son, he's an engineer now. And I told him, I said, when well, he was in college, I said, boy, I said, once you graduate with an engineering degree, you ain't never got to work for the rest of your life. He didn't believe me.
Today he's an engineer. He called me dad on board. I'm like, well, why? He says, I, I finished my work six hours ago. All he does all day is scroll up and down on social media. And they pay him 80, let me see, $115 an hour to scroll up and down on social media. If you do what God tells you to do, he will bless the rest. Life is truly about the choices that you make. Let's read Deuteronomy 30 and 15. It says, see, I have set before ye this day, life and good, death and evil. God is telling us this. He's put before you this day, life and good, death and evil. What will you choose? See, the problem with a lot of us is we got bad choosing this. Uh, we got bad uh, 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 decision making. But we pick what looks good and, and we follow that thing. Uh, sex is wonderful to the baby girl or to you get an STD or to your baby daddy find out you cheating on her or to your baby mama find out you cheating on her. It's wonderful. It's a great thing. But everything in life has a consequence. Smoking weed is great until you start forgetting stuff. Until you eat eat every day and now you gain 500 pounds. Uh, until, you, until you eat and sleep so much till you lose your job and you become unemployable because you got bad habits. Drinking is great until your liver don't work no more. Until you get something wrong with you. See the thing is, life is about choices. You have to understand, it's so important. You, you hold the key to your well, everything that you want in life. What kind of choices will you make? Let's keep reading, Deuteronomy 30 and 16. It says, in this that I command thee this day to Lord, Lord, love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in this land Wherever you go, you shall possess it. Verse 17. But if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, and you shall be drawn away, and worship other gods, and worship Hulu, and worship Instagram, and worship social media, and worship Bitcoin, and worship all these other things, it says, I will denounce you this day that ye shall surely perish, and ye shall not prolong the days of your life upon this land. Verse 19, and Jesus said this, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you because I set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Therefore, he says, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live for the pen and death. God says, if you choose life, not only will you live, your children will be blessed. If you choose life, not only will you prosper, your great, 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 great grandkids that you ain't met yet will prosper. Some of you don't understand that you are the key to changing your whole family. If my mother didn't come to America, the whole Hibbert line would have stopped in Jamaica. Some of you are the, are the anchors to changing everything in your family. God says you the only positive thing in his whole life. All the rest of them is ruined. But he says, I called you to change this whole thing. So he said, choose life. Stop choosing death. Because you have to realize you have to pay for your choices. You have to pay for everything that you do. I remember I talked to my son the other day, man, and we were talking about free. What's free? Nothing is free. Even the air that you breathe costs. What? The air, it don't cost me nothing. Hold on. That food that you eat, if you ain't got nothing to eat, you ain't going to breathe that well. Everything that you have costs. I remember a long time ago when I was a kid, I thought the trash was free. And so when we lived in Rialto, one month I, I didn't pay the trash bill. And I promise you, I stood in the window and I watched the trash truck pick up my neighbor's trash. And then the truck drove to my house. And he looked down and said, uh-uh. And he drove and kept going. I said, oh, he didn't even pick up the trash. Because everything has a price. God saying this day, choose me, follow me, and you will have a life that you dreamed of. But if you choose to follow fool's gold, if you follow NBA Youngboy, if you follow Dizzy Drake, 
If you follow all these people, I had to fuss at my grandbaby about that today. I said, you watching these people and they're not who you think they is. Because they're stu studio gangsters. See, I work in Compton. I, I know all the people on this side of town who about that life. I know all the people on the other side of town about that life. And half the rappers from Compton that claim that they gang banging and all that ain't never did none of that. So the thing is, don't be caught up in the studio hype and lose your life over a fake song that means nothing. Because God says he will not be mocked. And he says you have to pay for everything that you do, whether it's good or bad. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody come up to the front. Because there are curses on all of our families. And these curses are, some of y'all doing stuff that your mama and daddy used to do and you don't even know them like that. And you don't realize you walking in their steps. Uh, it's funny, my dad died nine years ago. I walk just like my father. The voice that you hear is his voice. My mama said you love women just like your daddy did. I never really met him. Because it's in you. The Bible says we were born in sin. You were born through sin. So make the decision to break some generation curses. And for some of you, those things ain't easy because you're like, well, well it feels good now. See, everything that feels good ain't good for you. See, the thing is, most of those homeless people out there now was balling 20 years ago. In the 90s and the 2000s, they were driving high and getting it up and, and doing their thing. Some of y'all been locked up. You talk to the OGs. Yeah, man, I had these cars. I had these women. I had these houses. But now they live outside in front of a supermarket. Because what happens is, the Bible says God will not be mocked. Everything that you do, you will pay for eventually. Unless God gives you grace. All of us need God's grace and God's mercy. Because, see, when we put God first, and the de see, the devil is, is the coldest person in the world. Because the devil will tempt you. Smoke this. Screw this. Do this. Gamble this. The devil will tempt you. And then he'll turn around and go tell God, God, check out Michael. He on Pornhub again. He cheating on his wife again. He down there at the strip club again. God, can I send somebody to murder him while he's in there? See, the devil will tempt you. He'll send you the DM. And you'll be like, ooh, ooh. Uh, are we hooking up? Yeah. He, and here you go driving. And the devil like, hey, you know he used to be from 30s. Send them 20s over there smoking right now. But here's what God does. God says, grace. Mercy. And the devil, when, 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 when the devil hear that, mercy, he can't touch you. It's, it's like you got a shield around you. And he like, and he can't get to you. 
You want God to give you grace and mercy. You want God to cover up your sin. You want God to cover up your past. You want God to cover up that STD. You want God to cover up everything. And we get that grace and mercy by following God. Following God. God said you ain't going to be perfect. Some of y'all ain't going to put down the weed smoke. But say, God, give me grace and mercy to get through this thing. Some of y'all ain't going to put down the Patron, but give me grace and mercy to get through this thing. Some of y'all ain't going to stop having sex with a whole lot of people, but God, give me grace and mercy so I don't get an STD or so I don't die from HIV. Ask God to give you his grace and mercy, and when he will help you get through the things that you struggle with. And today, before we leave here, ask God to help you to break the generation curse. I don't need you to speak your curses out. All of y'all know what your family struggles with. All of y'all know what your family struggles with. Ask God. Say, God, help me to break that curse. So right now, before we leave, we have a moment of silence. I, I'm, not, I, I'm going to talk, but while I'm talking, ask God to help you break that curse. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you that you release the curses that are amongst us. The generation curses that have held so many of us down. The curses that so many of us have fallen into the way and, and we didn't even realize it. Father, let's help us to break that thing that we like, that we love, that we can't stop. Help us, Father, to do better and dispense grace and mercy. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. All right, everybody. Anybody have any words? We wrap this up. Anybody have any words? All right, everybody grab a hand. 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 Everybody by your head. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for the word that went forth. Father, I ask that you help us, forgive us for our sins. Father, we're all sinners, Father, saved by your grace. There's nothing but your grace and your mercy while we can stand here today. Father, we ask that you help us to forgive loved ones. Father, help us to put down pride and help us to apologize when we do wrong. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity into the hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into the hand. So that these young people come to head and not to tell. So that they become victorious and never defeated. And so that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father. We ask that you sing grace and mercy, Father. We rebuke the enemy, Father. We rebuke our past so that anything that's in our past that's coming to our present, Father, cover us from that thing, Father. And we ask that all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a hand.